I came across this collection of projects while browsing Hackaday, and I really took interest in the challenge of extracting power from these photodiodes, which are essentially tiny solar cells, and making a device do something from a minimal amount of solar energy without any batteries, just using energy stored in capacitors. This one in particular stood out because this guy was able to harvest enough energy from these cells to periodically send data wirelessly. Taking this project as inspiration, I came up with a different approach, a specific energy harvesting chip for applications where the power input is in the milliwatts and an NRF module for my wireless link over an amplitude modulated transmitter so I can communicate directly with my phone. So after drawing out the schematic and laying out the PCB, I sent the board over to be built and waited a couple of weeks for them to arrive. Boards and stencils delivered, I pasted solder over the solder pads and placed components one at a time. Then comes the most satisfying part of the whole process, the hypnotic phase change of solder paste. It's a good idea at this point to do an ocular pat down after your reflow so you can catch any bridged pads and fix them before powering up. It also gives you the chance to rectify the mistake by thinking this trigger signal was active low instead of active high. Now having to invert the signal for the high side switch it's supposed to trigger. Find a place to fit those extra components on the board and continue on like nobody saw. The circuit works like this. Power comes in through the solar cell and monitored by the boost converter and it keeps the solar cell at its MPPT voltage by occasionally sampling its open circuit voltage. The boost converter adjusts the load on the cell to regulate it back to its MPPT voltage to extract energy efficiently. That small voltage gets boosted, slowly charging the capacitor bank up to its desired voltage, at which point the battery good pin is toggled to drive a MOSFET, which allows power to all devices downstream of it. During the time it's powered on, the NRF initializes, reads out the temperature data from an external sensor, and then sends out an advertising packet containing that temperature data, which can be scanned for and picked up by any device that supports BLE. Once the energy in the capacitor bank has been depleted, the battery good pin changes state, powering down the MOSFET and switching off all devices downstream of it. And then the cycle starts again. We can calculate the charge required to do all of this with current and time. And that's what we're interested in here so we can calculate the minimum capacitance needed to transmit data. Thankfully, this power profiler calculates charge out of the box, so we don't have to do any integration. It takes 20 milliseconds to advertise once and that uses about 50 microcoulombs of charge. The downstream circuitry only gets powered between 3.6 and 2.25 volts, which is the maximum voltage range compatible with the boost converter and the NRF chip. So if we need to get at least 50 microcoulombs of charge for that voltage range, then to calculate the capacitance we use this formula. Plugging in the values returns a capacitance of 37 microfarads, and that's the minimum capacitance needed for one transmission. I've placed a 100 microfarad capacitor in this circuit's power bank, and that's usually enough for it to advertise between one and three times before shutting down. This is perfect. It means it won't spend longer than it needs to charging, and when it's ready, it will reliably transmit full packets of data, meaning it will periodically transmit as quickly as it can charge. Now, it's really hard to show light intensity over video. It's really dependent on camera settings. But what I can do is put it in an environment that everyone is familiar with, and that's the fridge. This single dim light is all that is required to transmit data every few seconds using just one solar cell. And I was really impressed by that. If I switch to using a slightly larger amorphous solar cell, which is suited for low light conditions, then information can be transmitted inside a dimly lit room without ever needing batteries or some other wireless power source. Comment below if you have an idea for where this could be used and what kind of data it could transmit. Maybe it's a soil moisture sensor hidden in those garden lights. Or how about earrings that quietly track your heart rate and temperature. Now that I've built this, I can already see how the next revision can be smaller, smarter, and even more power efficient. But I have no idea what to do with it at that point. So have a think, but for now, that's it. Bye.